Good morning. In 2015, a groundbreaking television program took Israel by storm. Fauda tells the story of Israel's... <laughs> Fauda tells the story of Israel's elite Mista Aravim unit, a group of undercover commandos who infiltrate the Palestinian territories to stop terrorist attacks. The show has garnered awards not only for its roller coaster plot and tremendous performances, but also for its in depth, gritty exploration of the Israeli Palestinian conflict in a very nuanced way, and especially for its unflinching portrayal of a Hamas terror cell and the people caught in its orbit. While Fauda focuses on conflict within Israeli society, behind the scenes, another story unfolded. The show, which films in an Arab city, Kfar Qassam, near the border with the West Bank, has been a driver for economic opportunity and coexistence for Jewish and Arab Israelis. Before we welcome our panelists to discuss this international sensation, which made its debut here on Netflix this past December, ladies and gentlemen, this is Fauda. أنا بقول لك إذا بتقوليش وين أبو أحمد راح تتراجع تكون شهيد قبل ما أخلص عليك Please welcome the co-creators of Fauda, Avi Asakarov and Lior Raz. Hi. Thank you. So we have a limited, limited amount of time. I want to jump into this. We've got a lot to cover. First, what is Fauda? What is a Fauda? Fauda means chaos in Arabic. Uh, that's the word that they describe chaos, and it describes a kind of a situation in which Palestinians lived for years, between the years of 2000 and 2007, during the years of the Second Intifada. That was daily life for Palestinians. But also in the undercover units, we use this word Fauda when we got discovered. We got burned. They understand that we are Israelis and Jewish. So when you're undercover, if, if, the, if the, your adversaries figure out that you guys are Israelis? So in the radio, we had to say, we have Fauda, and the rescuer was supposed to come. Sometimes they came, sometimes they're not, but this they was the intention. Yeah. yeah, OK. So now let's talk about your own experiences. Tell us a little bit about your own backgrounds that informed the creation of this show. OK, so I used to be in uh, Duvdevan. It's an undercover unit in Israel. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I lived this life for, uh, for a while. I, I actually served in the reserve for 20 years in Dubdevan as well. And actually, when I met Avi, we know each other from Jerusalem. We were very young and we a lot of hair. Yep. So, uh, so good old days. Good old days, yeah. Uh, so we talked about it. And we talked about this experience that we wanted to bring to the Israeli stage. And I was a Hamas terrorist. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I, I, was, I am a journalist uh, for the last 17 years, Times of Israel right now, and I'm covering the Middle East and the Palestinian side. And meeting with Hamas, meeting with Hamas officials, militants, uh, Fatah, etc., etc., in order to understand, in order to talk to them and to bring to the Israeli audience and readers what does the other side think of planning of, right. et cetera? For, for just the audience to know, if you follow the Times of Israel, you follow Avi on Twitter, there, is, there are a few journalists in the world that are as close to what is happening in the Palestinian territories, the intra-politics, the intra-terror organization politics, and Avi, so you are very close to this. Now, let's talk for a moment about Kfar Qassam, the town where you filmed Fauda. So it is an Israeli Arab town. There you were Israeli filmmakers. 
with a mix of Israeli actors and Arab actors, and the crew was a mix of Israeli and Arabs, Israelis and Arabs. How did that work? What was going on behind the scenes? Actually, uh, in the beginning, uh, ex um, Protective Edge was started while we were shooting. So the Gaza War 2014. Exactly. Okay, summer and, of 2014. Yeah, and we canceled the first day of shooting in Kfar Qasim because we were afraid. We didn't know how the Arab population would accept us. At night, the mayor of Kfar Qasim is an, is an Arab. So an Israeli, Israeli Arab, Arab mayor. Yeah, called us and said, listen, uh, we talked about coexistence during peace. Let's do co coexistence uh, during, during war because the missiles don't understand if you are Jewish or Arab. And actually, thank, and that night, 150 people came to work there for a month and a half. Mix of Israel, Jews and Arabs. Jews and Arabs living for a month and a half during the war in Kfar Qasem, all together, working in a creativity bubble of peace. And we had an argument, we had, you know, just like me and my wife, we love each other, but we have some argument. So, uh, but it was, it was amazing. And we, I, now I have amazing good friends from Kfar Qasem and uh, actors, Arab actors as well. Uh, Avi, when you speak to Palestinian sources within the, the territories, what is their reaction to the show? Actually, they love it. You know, usually they do not say it in public, they're not interviewed about that, but yeah. when I talk to them in four eyes, so yes, they like it. And you know what? Even Hamas officials like it. I was just last week in, yeah, just last week I was in Hamas, in Israeli jail, meeting with Hamas officials. It became a huge hit in the Israeli prison. I mean, they watch it, and Hamas even wrote about it, even wrote in their official website that it's a bad show, it's a Zionist show, don't watch the show, yada, 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 and at the end, they put a link to the first episode of Fauda. <laughs> but, but this is an important point, because what, what does that say about Israeli society, that a show, that a society that is so transparent, so dem you know, dem democratic in all of its messy ways, self-critical, self-questioning, is there a recognition that if you look at all throughout the Middle East, it seems that only Israel could produce a show that is so brutally honest as this one. You know what, this point even was mentioned during my meeting last week. Hamas officials sitting around with me and saying, look, bravo, that the Israeli society is capable of watching a show like that that talks about bad Israelis, not only good Israelis, and talk about good Palestinians and not only about bad Palestinians. Okay, now I wanna just talk a little bit, going back to your guys' backgrounds. So, uh, Lior, you, you said that you served in this unit. Describe for people here what it actually means to serve in a unit like this. For instance, you go undercover. What, what is, how does one prepare for that? What's that like? It's hard, yeah. <laughs> first of all. Uh, but you have to be an amazing actor. Just imagine you are 18 years old and you have to be an amazing actor. You're going to uh, villages in a diff different language, different body language. And for me, as, I'm, as an actor now in Israel, I can play somewhere, and uh, if, I'll, if I'll not play so good, they will write about me in the newspapers, Leo Raz is a bad actor. I don't care. But if in the field you are playing not so good, you can die. Your friends can die. A little harsher a reaction acting. than a bad review. For a bad actor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, so you have to be an amazing actor. You have to be like, you know, an iceman, because just think, think that you go out in the field, talking in a different language, they're telling you in the radio, listen, uh, we don't know where the terrorists, but in the meantime, you, you, you have to start to talk with someone. So you speak in Arabic, salam alaikum, buying something in the, but in the radio, they're telling me you, you 10 seconds to go, five seconds to go, two seconds to go, 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 go. So your mind's supposed to work in so different levels, and you have to be, uh, very, an, an Iceman, <laughs> I think. And, you're, and you are the son of an Algerian immigrant to Israel and an Iraqi immigrant to Israel, right? Yeah. And so Arabic was something you knew growing up in Israel? You were sort of part of the Arabic community within Israel growing up? My father uh, was a Shin Bet also, and he, sp he talked in Arabic as, at home. And thank you. And I remember in my house, we had a sofa, but we have also a makad that my father hosts his friend on the floor like Arabs. They were talking in Arabic at my home. I was, it was embarrassing for me because I thought I'm Ashkenazi. But, uh, <laughs> but then, and also my father had a nursery. And in the nursery, all the workers were Arabs. So they were my playmate every night, every day after school. I went to, to work there and they were my playmate. They didn't know Hebrew, so I started to learn Arabic in order to be part of them. And where did you 
how did you get uh, comfortable enough that you could be covering the Palestinian scene the way you do, immersing yourself in the global oh, culture? Uh, well, I knew the West Bank uh, way, way before yeah. I became a journalist. But uh, then again, starting to roll as a journalist covering the West Bank and Gaza. I used to travel a lot to Gaza Strip, not anymore. And getting all the crazy experiences that you can expect. I mean, sitting down with militants, wanted terrorists, knowing that at some point, you know, I was sitting down one day in the house of Mahmoud Azhar, one of Hamas's leaders, after Israel tried to assassinate him twice. And I was praying like, please, God, don't make the Israelis now assassinate <laughs> the guy. Wait, wait till I'm out, then. Right. <laughs> the, the, uh, you bring a lot of your own life experiences, very personal way, into the show. Yep. So one episode is dedicated, I think, uh, Lior, to uh, your girlfriend. So yeah. can you share with us that story? Yeah, when, uh, when I was 19, I had a girlfriend named Iris Azulai. We were together for three years, um, love of my life, actually. And she, in 91, she went out from her home. She went to the, to the military, and an Arab terrorist stabbed her to death. In Jerusalem? In Jerusalem. And actually, I didn't talk about it for 20 years till I met Avi again, and Avi asked me, let's talk about Iris, because he knew her. And we wrote in the show a character that dying in an explosion, in a bar explosion. So all the text that you hear between her and Boaz, the guy in the unit, is the same text that I had in, with Iris. And actually, we have an interesting story about it. You know that the killer of Iris was released in Shalit's deal in 2011. So when Shalit was, they gave about some thousand Prisoners released. Seven released. He was one of the, the 100 and something that were deported to Gaza. Yeah. So he was sitting there, and I think that some of you folks remember that two years ago I was interviewing here Musab Hassan Yusuf, son of Hamas, the Green Prince. And it turned out that at the end of the day, because he was out of jail and they wanted him to marry someone, they brought Musab's sister to marry the killer of Lior's girlfriend. And Lior and Musab met just a couple of months ago in LA in Fauda's uh, premiere on Netflix. And that was a very awkward moment. We life. couldn't talk with each other. We just hugged each other and that's it. Wow. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the co-creators of Fauda, Lior Raz and Avia Sakharov, be sure, be sure if you have not to watch this show on Netflix and get ready for the next season which they begin shooting this summer. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs>